I got to tell you something. So typically Sunday nights in this house are all about Homeland. And in, in my opinion, Homeland is maybe the best series. Never seen it. Anyway, uh, you know, I'm an outlier. Best series I've ever seen. That number one. But Homeland is no longer. So it's the last, the last dance has been on now. I know. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And I got to tell you, we are both Nick fans. So I'm a tad older than you. So I actually do remember <laughs> the seven, you know, their champion, their second championship in the early 70s. Come I still on, have dude. Don't tell me no. you remember their second championship. Okay. All right. I mean, if I had said you... the first championship, I would have agreed. The second one, I remember. But I'm not. Like a... not... All right. So you're sitting where you, I could see, like, sitting in the yellow section, you know, with, no, no, with your dad with, with a velour shirt on, shirt on and some bell bottoms there. Come on. I did not go to any of the games. I was a huge Jerry Lucas fan. That's another story. But I bring it up because right. this once proud franchise was just – last night was the night they eviscerated the Knicks. And I got to tell you something. <laughs> you, know, you think about all the tough defeats and all the amazing comebacks teams have done against our Knicks. And it got me thinking about, A, the comeback in the market today, but – just the stellar performance of something that you've been pointing out, these, these semiconductor stocks, I mean, it's like nothing's changed in the world. So what tonight, Intel was your final trade on Fast Money. What, what, where's your head at in terms of the semis here in the context of don't call it a comeback, just call it a dynasty? Well, look, I mean, it, it, it's got a feel to it a little bit like, like you know, the bad boys think they're actually winning. They're, 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 they're conference final against the Celtics and Larry Legend comes in and steals that inbound pass, dishes it to DJ who comes down in the hole. And then by the way, ushers in one of the appropriately awful moments in Isaiah's career where he made those comments about bird that he still won't apologize for, which, you know, eviscerating the Knicks. I mean, we, we, we've done it pretty badly on our own. Then we got Isaiah destroying the Knicks for another five years and setting us back another five. All right. Out of my system. Uh, Mark, if you think about where we came into today, we had a weekend to think about down 4% over two days to end the week after what had been a heroic run. And we talked a lot about the mega cap tax. Then over the weekend, we hear the guy who everybody wants to be a backstop for this market, uh, the guy who everybody uh, praises with being a, an appropriate bottom picker in, in the fall of 08, uh, Warren Buffett decides, not only am I not buying, but I'm a seller here and sells his airlines. I, you know, I thought we were going to have a big down day. I really did. And, and it felt like that. And in fact, I had the sense while I'm watching the last dance last night, by the way, I got pulled away by a, a, a Zoom family call, which is a wonderful moment. Um, and when you've got 13 family members on a call, it's a great time. It's disorderly. But when you want to watch the last dance, it's kind of like, you know, guys, can we get on with this? Um, but I felt last night, I was looking at S&P futures throughout that time because I thought we were going to have a bigger down day. And today, um, I think, was a, a very strong bounce off the market. This was nothing extraordinary for those of you who are not watching the markets today. Um, we closed, you know, up, you know, 30, 40 bips. But very important day, Guy. 100%. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the amount that we closed higher. I mean, if people just look at it, they see it's a benign day. I mean, at one point, S&P was down 50 handles or something. And to your point, Given the comments from Buffett over the weekend, given the way the market closed last week, I was convinced today it was down in terms of Dow points, anywhere from 600 to 800 Dow points. It just made sense. And obviously that didn't happen. And, and it didn't happen. But with the banks not participating, I mean, it's amazing how strong the market was without participation of a number of key groups. So to your point, these, these semiconductor stocks seem impervious to what's going on in the outside world. And maybe rightly so, I don't know. But today is one of those days where you sort of put a check mark next to. Uh, it's like when you're reading a book that every once in a while when I was reading Moby Dick back in the day, a great Melville classic. I actually saw him speak to George. Oh, I thought Jackson. you were talking Moby Dick by Zeppelin. But uh, that, that's anyway. The, that's the other great Moby Dick. Again, <laughs> I digress. But you know, every once in a while you come across a page where you have to sort of, you have to bookmark or put the page down. And I think that's what you have to do in terms of today's market action. You've, you've been bringing this up now for three or four days. Um, and and you've, you've talked about also the, the 
just the, the war of words that's beginning to percolate again on the trade war front and the administration uh, looking to lean on China, possibly attach new tariffs, attach them to COVID, atta- you know, um, and, and boy, I mean, it, that's not what this market needs right now. And, and it's interesting um, that, that in the same way we had some of that trade war rhetoric for, for, for two years that at times, obviously, the market listened to, but it didn't listen to it today. And it's the last thing um, that we could use, especially when you think about the Fed's been essentially firing a gun with, with no bullets uh, on the back of really just trying to jawbone uh, what they could do. Um, feels like the, the administration is working a bit against some of that, that, that positive confidence factor. This is a new variable that started last week. And, you know, I think President Trump, say what you want about him, but he, you know, although at times he doesn't think things through, I think he knows in the back of his mind that if he's going to start bringing this up, it's got to be somewhat market negative. But I think he's playing the calculus that this is going to play to my base. But I got to tell you something, this is dangerous. And the fact that it seems to be, es- seems to be escalating and escalating with Mr. Mnuchin's comments today and, and such, I, it, it's got to be worrisome because I'll tell you something, you might not think it's very negative for the market, but it's certainly not positive for the market. Yeah. And, and you know, it, this could be, uh, it all comes back to Dennis Rodman right now, because for all we know, he was in North Korea making sure apparently our boy's OK out there um, and his, his train's moving around again. Um, but but, uh, um, you know, as we were watching him on the little screen last night, um, the story of Asia is still a very big part of, of where the market needs to look forward to. And I, I, it, as much as we've been encouraged and a driver for the market over here uh, at times for the last month has been data we've gotten out of China. Uh, Starbucks reopening, Nike seeing sales uptick. Um, last night, you got some very disappointing PMI data. Uh, Taiwan, which arguably was the one Asian economy that never closed, um, went from a 50.4 PMI for, for folks who don't even know what that is. That's, you know, that's manufacturing, that's an expansion. Um, and they, they went down to 42.2, and that means it's actually contracting. That's a big move. And so you know, a lot of those numbers, South Korea, which is essentially the industrial, you know, power of Asia uh, on some level, certainly the export player, um, was down dramatically. So these are the things we're worried about. And, and uh, um, you know, the market continues to be defensive. And, and maybe correctly so. I mean, maybe it's as simple as don't fight the Fed. I don't know. But I want to leave it on this note, okay? And I'm really interested to hear your answer to this question. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. If the Knicks had the worm, Dennis Rodman, as opposed to – Oh, Charles, Charles Oakley. No, Charles Oakley. Do they win a championship? Yes or no? Don't hem and haw. Just answer the question. No, absolutely not. Uh, Rodman was a third or a fourth piece of that nucleus in, in each team he won on. And in San Antonio, he was probably the fifth piece. Um, so, no, look, that, that Knicks team was missing a shooting guard. With all due respect to my boy Starks, um, he was horrendous. Um, and let's be clear. Uh, we can do this right, guy. We're honest, guys. That Nick team shouldn't even have been in the finals if Jordan wasn't whiffing on, on balls down in Burl Durham and playing minor league ball. So um, with that, uh, I got to go back and watch what my family didn't let me watch last night, tonight on, uh, on Disney+. Plus. You should, and I'll say this. If the Knicks had the worm, they have a championship ring. And I'll leave it at that, and we'll talk tomorrow. Just save your indignance for later. Bye.